Hi, I am Dr. Suresh Sitaraman. Today I am in Thirnal Valley. I had a chance to meet an ANSYS specialist in high frequency electronics, Sri Parnade. Hi Parnade, how are you? Hi, I am good. How are you? I am good. I am good. I am very happy to meet you today. Actually, is in this in this forum. Yes. I just noted your uh, presentation while you were presenting about high frequency electronics. That was very impressive. So I thought of uh, uh, taking the same to the public. So. Yes. I requested immediately you accepted for the same uh -huh. and in your busy schedule you are here with us uh -huh. uh, to give an insight about the high frequency electronics and ANSI simulation tools for young budding minds. Yes. Okay, I have, um, how was your travel? Travel was good, I mean I came from Trivandrum to Tirunelveli and this highway I really enjoyed in the middle of all these windmills and all. So, yeah. That's good, you really enjoyed it, right? Yeah, I mean, I visited Rameshwaram earlier, so I followed the same route, so it was a good experience once again. Right. Yeah. Very happy, you know, because uh, during our presentation, I I just noted your profile, that the profile was very interesting. You know, you completed your BE, ME and, uh, yes. and uh, PhD in IIT. Particularly in this particular ANSYS field, you are very much interested and passionate about learning ANSYS software. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that that makes me to put uh, this question to you, right? Mm -hmm. What created a passion to learn about uh, simulation tools uh, right from your uh, UG to this big ST level? Okay, so to start with, like when I was doing my BTEC, in, at the end of the BTEC, we get introduced to this microwave engineering. And from my very beginning of the engineering, I was always interested in physics. Engineering was never there in my mind. So when microwave engineering came into picture, all these Maxwell equations and everything like electrostatics, magnetics, all these things, I found it really interesting. So then I decided that, okay, uh, I want to pursue this topic further in my uh, career. Uh, now, uh, doing like I did my BTEC from a private college, right? So in 2014. Uh -huh. So back then things were like, okay, if you are doing BTEC, IT job is like the main thing in the industry. So when I was doing my uh, BTEC, like at the end of this th third year and fourth year, what is the general mindset is, okay, we'll get placed in some IT companies and all. But I, being an electronics engineering student with a keen interest in physics, IT was never there in my mind. So what I wanted to do is like, okay, let's, if I want to go with uh, microwave further, what is the next option? So being at the private college, we were not much exposed to the industry at all at that time, like 2014. Yeah. So then what I got to know is like, okay, I can do MTech in microwave in engineering. And at, at that time I did my MTech from Jadapur University, which is there in Kolkata itself. That was the best college in that state. So, I mean, my date rank was not that good that I could get some chance in IITs. So, that's why I did my MTech from there. Now, there I first got introduced to like how these antennas and all these things work. Like, in the BTEC, we don't get that much overview. But there, when I got to know about this antenna, so that was really fascinating for me because what happens in microwave is wave travels, but you cannot see them. So you have to really feel them, how the fields are interacting, how the wave is traveling. So those things were very fascinating to me. Now if we talk about simulation software, at that time being in a state university, we didn't have that much resources, okay. but little bit of things were there. So yeah. I got introduced to HFSS in my MTech time itself. Oh. Now uh, my MTech project was not related to antenna at all. My okay. project was something else. It was all about some, you know, material uh, modeling and all and uh, characterizing their electromagnetic behavior. So it okay. was all uh, measurement based. Nothing was there in simulation and all. But yes, we had some anechoic chamber where we do antenna measurement, like how it is radiating, in which direction the beam is rotating and all. So all these things were there in measurement. Simulation was there like the PhD seniors and all they used to do that but I was not much exposed to but then when I did uh, my MTech I was feeling like okay I looks like it is still not sufficient whatever knowledge I have only antenna is not sufficient so in Jadupur University the whole course was mainly designed for antenna little bit of other microwave stuffs were also there but still I didn't get that flavor what I wanted. So then I searched for what next. Now in West Bengal I saw what best I could do. 
so then i thought let's go out of state then so then i got to know about uh, care department at iit delhi and they have the best facility of microwave research and all so everything just happened and how it happened i mean i was not that planned so it happened and then when i enrolled for phd there uh, i mean uh, i was not even aware who all professors are there i mean whom shall i talk to what topic will be there so yeah, when you know, when something has been decided it will come to you <laughs> automatically so, so that was the case while you were no narrating your thought process and how you were traveled mm-hmm. it was very impressive really <laughs> to, to think about and to hear about it yes so like uh, when i uh, went to iit and then i was uh, assigned to professor call i feel he is god of microwave and i really believe whatever he taught me till today not only in microwave and life lessons also i try to implement them so whatever you have seen today in my presentation all this skills whatever i told you in 5 minutes of time that advanced thing it took me 2 3 years to learn that and yeah. i learned it from my professor only and he always encourages me how we can share yeah, knowledge thanks to your professor <laughs> yes yes i mean when people were appreciating no, no, me no really, no really really that was very impressive well just sitting in um, keep on watching your uh, mm-hmm. the actions to you were trying to no uh, pictureize the, yes. all those things while you were presenting yes. so we can able to witness in imagination yes because so that's how that i think <laughs> so i try to at least you know make things understand in that way only if uh, i don't express in that way that people will not understand so i try, try to talk in their language because microwave is such a topic it's a bit tricky it's not that easy i mean even today i will say i only understand maybe 10% of it so whatever 10% i understand i want to you know transfer that knowledge to my junior senior whoever is there now like, it is going to reach almost <laughs> 70000 plus students <laughs> yes so like uh, that's what i'm saying like until and unless you experience it you don't know what is there so what i can say is if you have little bit of interest in physics you should go for this you should explore this because what happened like even during my phd i was not aware that how this is going to influence in future so luckily in my phd i designed antenna i designed filter i designed power amplifier now at that time i was not aware why i am doing this just my professor is saying that okay you design this it is done you go for the next one i really didn't know what all practical applications in a large scale scenario i was not aware but then after my phd when i came to ansys here whatever i see in daily life in this industry everything is having that antenna that filter that power amplifier everything whatever i design and luckily throughout my phd so, hfss is, was there my partner you perfectly connected the academy yes. to the industry now right yes exactly. and like when i came to ansys i could see that gap between industry and uh, academics i mean it has been more than one year for me in ansys but still i don't know lots of things what is happening in industry lots of things uh-huh. so what all things i was talking like this antenna filter power amplifier this and that everything is part and parcel of your daily life uh-huh. you take example of a mobile phone wifi anything aircraft automotive ship anything anything you take example of anything everywhere you will see all these things because we are closely interacting with industries like medical automotive industry a and d high tech industry you think about any pcb pcbs are there everywhere okay. in every electronics yes, item yes. right and uh, like being part of ansys now i can understand how, whatever i learned during my phd days and tech days or we take that whatever through this academic journey i have learned i can relate to that what i do nowadays so all i want to say is like like my professor says you should always think big think in a different way in out of box don't go to that rat race where you know everyone is running because once i am in ansys now i can see how this industry is so big this rf and microwave it's not that only this much no we are not aware about what all things this whole world is doing so everywhere if 
take up any industry employing right so everywhere this electronics is there and if you understand how this rf and microwave is working you you can implement it anywhere you want any way you want now simulation is uh, like the easiest option to gather that because in hardware you cannot get all these things right if you right now if you think about that okay i want to make a pcb you should have a fabrication lab this and that that all set up yeah, will, which is, will, uh, we need a practical set up for yes, that it will cost like thousand and crores of money right that, that's absolutely. not possible yeah. but for simulation you just need a good computer uh -huh. right that, only with that and, screen uh, and some mind. creativity yeah uh, so like you know how to model it uh, and modeling is also not that difficult it's yeah. it's just that you should have the geometry of that thing uh, that is and, a question i want to raise no yes. while talking about the simulation what is the fundamental requirement for a uh, student okay. uh, to start from the scrap and to build himself to the final level so like when initially i was introduced to hfss like it really took me one year to understand what all things are there like i am talking about my initial phd days mm. now there you need all those in depth knowledge it's not that and nobody will come and tell you that okay this is how this is how this is how you do it it's a self learning process and that's why we have that in depth knowledge about it and that's how phd evolves but if i talk about btech people right there we have very short amount of time to learn all these things so nowadays we have lots of courses and training and everything where you know a step by step guidance is also given how you can make your model just if you have only the cad of it then you don't know what to do with it right so it's not at all that difficult like i was explaining like you have the cad model assign the material assign the boundary assign the excitation just run the simulation you will see the result so it's just a four five steps but why i am doing that four five steps what is the meaning of those four five steps that will need little bit of technical knowledge which if you go through some courses or whatever theoretical courses you are being taught at your college that you have to apply over there it's as simple as that it's not that difficult now i can understand that okay for me it took one year because i didn't have that much resources what all i had is like just a tool and just a structure uh -huh. now all these things i had to learn myself seniors were there they used to help me but the way i can see like all those guided courses step by step things i was not aware about that 6 years back like uh, given that okay all those things at my hand I don't know. Maybe my future would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, anyway, anyway, it's uh, very, very happy to hear about all those things in your journey, your process of uh, uh, thinking uh, and creating this antenna and, uh, yes. uh, filters and whatnot. Uh, how about the employability in terms of this? Uh, I mean, not only this, but the ANSYS software or any other uh, simulation software. Yes. What about the employability? What is the industry need? Whether the industry is really looking for these kind of uh, yes. students? Yes. So, like as I was mentioning, right? You take, talk about any industry, uh, automotive, high tech, you know, uh, aerospace and defense. Everywhere there is electronics. Like since I am an electronics student, I talk. I know only yeah, about that. Yeah, that's what I picked. The right? perfect person for yes. electronics. Yes. So, like everywhere, there is a requirement of a good skilled person. Now, if you know all this simulation software, that means you know how to mimic the real life problem in that a simple screen, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So that will save lots of time to investigate the real life problem because in simulation, of course, it is going to take less amount of time than the real really, measurement really. and all. Yes. And also, lots of money it will save, right? so if you have the skill if you know how to model those real life problems it's not that easy i am not saying that all this complicated things are so easy it will take some time to learn all these things i am still also in that learning process but if you know how to model how to mimic how everything is you know happening in reality if you know that then definitely that skill is going to help you in each and every industry i mean talk about any industry everywhere there is a need for this so my understanding is you have a lot of opportunities lots of opportunities you have a right skill yes it's just that we are not getting exposed to that correct things maybe i i'm not sure what is happening in these days scenario because 6 7 years back when i was there in btech or mtech 
that time at least i didn't have that much exposure ki okay these many companies are working in this domain i was not aware when i was in iit i got to know about all these things and rather than iit like there also i i knew only maybe 10 20% of it when i am here in ansys because every day we are interacting with different industries yes, yes, yes. we need in automotive because right now i am you know part of signal integrity power integrity and my mc so these two things come from different industry like yes. one is high tech industry exactly. like all the semiconductor industry oh, yeah, so yeah. you make phone your microprocessor all the yeah, things yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. so we interact with those companies as well as automotive companies so everywhere electronics is there everywhere your microwave is yeah, there exactly. right so yeah i mean it's there it's very nice no from your um, Uh, I mean, from our discussion, I came to understand that uh, students, you have a lot of opportunities in this fourth generation, and you are going to be in the fifth generation. So try to update yourself. So the updation is not only for uh, making marks or making only money, but uh, making a reasonable future. Money so, is also there. Good uh, amount of uh, money. Good amount of money. Yeah, <laughs> it's good amount of money is also necessary. Um, so in all terms, you want to make you so you want to make yourself a sophisticated life, and you want to be a good citizen. Uh, i hope uh, this is a set example for you and i hope this particular video will give you a lot of insights about the future of electronics thank you for your time um, you are given a, a good insight about the in understanding of electronics in the industrial scenario and how to mold yourself to be uh, to be updated in all those things and what are the job opportunities all those things are very very fantastic i hope it will Uh, open the mind of seventy uh, thousand students. I think so. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot.